Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Anna Castle, Director of Marketing here at Advisacon, and I'd just like to take a brief moment to tell you a little bit about Advisacon, just in case you're not familiar with who we are and what we do. We are a gold project partner with Microsoft and have been in the project and portfolio management space uh, for over 20 years and we have extensive experience uh, covering a wide variety of industries. We're really passionate about streamlining your project with a blend of methodology and tools and ultimately we really strive to be your partner uh, through your project life cycle. Uh, in fact, we like to think of ourselves as your project management one-stop shop. In efforts to uh, make sure that we are able to offer you that, we uh, consult and train and even author books. We like to keep our skills sharp so that we're uh, ready and available to make sure that we can parachute in at whatever um, point you need us to be able to guide you to a best practices uh, level within your project management environment. We uh, really work to make sure we're getting you the information you need in the format in the format that works best for you. So whether that's one of our books or one of the uh, tools we've developed or a custom training class uh, where we'd love to hear what your needs are and see how we can best meet them. A quick note about our session today. Uh, we'd love to hear any questions you may have along the way. Feel free to utilize the question uh, section of the control panel and uh, we will do our best to answer them as they come in. And if we're not able to cover them due to the time frame today, we'll be sure and follow up with the answer. And at this point, I'd love to introduce today's uh, session speaker, Mr. Bob Bondarouk, our Senior Project Advisor here at Advisacon. Bob, welcome. Thanks, Anna. Good afternoon to all of you. My name is Bob Bondaruk. I am an advisor here at Advisacon. I advise on Microsoft Project, uh, project server implementations. Um, I do a little bit of project management. I do a little bit of technical work. Uh, I've been a technology professional for maybe going on 20 years, doing stuff around Microsoft Office automation, uh, X Microsoft Access development doing some SQL Server and Oracle database type work. I've also been a project manager since 1998, so that's getting on close to 20 years as well. Mostly working in PMOs as an analyst or a trainer or a consultant, uh, implementing reporting systems and project management methodologies and practices. I am the chapter president for the Portland PMI chapter, or at least I was, and I'm now the past president. <clears throat> and I'm an avid hiker and mountain climber. I just climbed South Sister this weekend, this last weekend, and I'm also an avid soccer fan. Uh, I like the Timbers and the Thorns, and my son plays for the Timbers development team, and I get to watch about 50 to 60 soccer games a year. So if you want to chat about soccer, shoot me an email. Today we're going to talk about macros. So for our agenda, we're going to walk through options for macros, talk about some examples of macros. We're going to build some macros, maybe a boss report, maybe some kind of a data import. Uh, we're going to discuss complicated macros, and then we'll take your questions and answer them. So we're going to do a demo. We're going to live for most of this webinar over in Microsoft Project Pro. So I've already opened up a file that I have called Finance Data. It's a schedule. Um, it's a series of meetings, meetings one, two, three, four, six, seven. Uh, for whatever reason, I didn't have meeting five. I must have skipped that when I was building this out. Um, and then meeting seven is a little bit more complex. It's got some tasks in here. It's a fairly simple schedule, just a few tasks, but it shows the points. Uh, on the resource sheet, we have some resources. Uh, I've gone after the presidents the last ten, if you will. And uh, they each play for a team, either the donkey or the elephant. They all have a boss who's their wife. And those are the resources, and I've assigned them all to tasks. It's just kind of a fun little example. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of my schedule. Uh, you can do all of the things we're going to do today in any project plan or project schedule. So let's talk about what is a macro. A macro is a series of steps that you record and automate within Microsoft Project Pro. 
Um, so if you find yourself doing the same actions repeatedly over and over and over, uh, you can use a macro to record those actions and then uh, automate that so that you don't have to do step one, two, three, four, five. You can just click a button and have it kind of cascade through those steps. In addition to macros, there's VBA coding. And in reality, they're the same thing. Uh, but I, mentally, I think of the a macro as kind of a, a user's way to record and track VBA steps that for, for people that really aren't developers. And I think of VBA as the the development back end where a development type person who is a coder and has a lot of uh, programming experience would go in and actually create automated programs. And so the macros I see is more generated towards project management people who probably aren't developers and the VBA side is more towards people who are in the development side. So on that note, we'd like to do a little poll and kind of find out what your role is. So Anna, could you kick off our poll? Absolutely. Thanks. This is a new feature for me. I haven't seen this, so I don't know how it works. Give people just a one more minute. Okay, looks like answers are in. And you know what? We have 100% project managers with us today. Awesome. So I am going to go with the assumption that you guys are not developers and that you don't jump into the VBA side of things and write uh, huge complicated development programs in Visual Basic and connect up to SQL Server databases. I'm going to assume that you have staff in IT that might do that work that you work with, but you yourselves don't actually do it. That's going to be the focus of my webinar. Um, so when you talk about macros, where are they? So on the ribbon bar up in Project Pro, you have file, task, resource, and over here you have view. And on the very far right of view is a group called macros. And that confuses me because I don't ever think of that as a view activity. Um, and so I, I mentally I just remember that it's somewhere near the end of the, the ribbon and I, and I end up always having to hunt for it. Uh, so if you click on the little drop-down arrow, it'll show you four different things. View macros, record macro, visual basic, and macro security. So we're going to take a couple minutes to talk about macro security. Um, so there's four settings under macro security. And the macro security is in place because back you know, 20 years ago, we used to send emails with Microsoft Office application files in it. And there wasn't really any security in there. And malicious type people would create really interesting macros and you would get it in your email and you would think, oh, I should open this and see what it does and the macro would run and maybe it would delete all the files in your hard drive or maybe it would change the background color of your desktop or, you know, something less than ideal for you. Um, so now there's four options. One is disable all macros without notification. So I can't really recommend that option because um, it disables the macros and it doesn't even tell you that there's a macro and it's disabled. So you have no idea whether there's something there that you should be doing with that file. So if your colleague sends you a, a, a Microsoft project plan and, and it's got a great macro in it and he calls you up on the phone and says, hey, go do this thing, you're going to be puzzled because you didn't even know it was there. Um, disable all macros with notification. This is kind of the default option. This is the one most people use. Uh, and then what this does is when you open a file that's got a macro in it, it'll tell you. This file has a macro in it. Do you want to enable it? Yes or no? And, and that gives you the option to choose. And, and it assumes that you know that the, whether the file is safe or not. And you know who you got the file from and whether or not you trust them. Uh, the next option is disable all macros except digitally signed macros. Uh, Microsoft runs a process where you can, as a company, set up and get a signature for your macros. Um, so if you had macros you wanted to share all across your company or if you had customers that you needed to share macros with, you could go through the Microsoft process, get a digital signature and attach those. And then any files that came from you would have that signature and uh, the office applications would trust that signature and automatically open those macros. And finally, there's enable all macros. And like it says, not recommended, potentially dangerous code can run. So the dangerous code is delete all your files. Uh, I can very easily write a macro that would go through and delete all the files in your high drive. It would take me about an hour. You don't want that. I don't want to do it, but people, there are people out there that would be interested in doing that and think it's fun. 
so we stick with disable all macros with notification. All right, so the difference between a macro and VB is macros are for, uh, you can go up here and you can click on record a macro and it'll record the steps as you walk through them. Um, if you click on Visual Basic, it's going to open up the Visual Basic Editor and it's going to show you all of the steps in Visual Basic. Um, I don't expect you to understand that or know what it is, just know that when you click on that editor, this is what it opens and it shows you all these Visual Basic tasks. Um, these are actually the macros. Uh, this is the format that they're stored in within Microsoft Project. You can go in and edit them if you understand Visual Basic. Uh, you can get a developer type to go in and edit them as well. Just know that they're there and that that's how they're stored. Let's talk about creating a macro. So we go in and we click Macros and we click Record Macro. And it's going to come up with a window. And it asks for a name. And the important thing to know about the name is the names need to be unique, and it doesn't show you the list of names right here, so you kind of have to remember what names have I used. I try to use a unique name that gives me a, an idea of what this macro is going to do. So if it's a macro that does something around a report, like if I have to do a report for my boss every week, I call it the boss report. Or if it's a macro related to exporting something, I call it the export report. Or you have a control, a shortcut key here. So you can hit control and then plus and then a key. So if I type a G here, I have now created a shortcut key for this macro. And when I hit control G, it's going to run this macro. Uh, the thing to understand about that is it does override the existing shortcut keys on your keyboard. So if you're the type of person who likes to use control C and control V to cut and paste things, and you rename your macro with control C, you've now disabled the control C command to cut and paste and you've turned it into this macro command. Um, so control C would work when you're in other applications to cut and paste, but when you went into Project Pro, it would no longer work as a cut and paste. Um, store macro in. So it gives you two options here, a global file or this project. Uh, the global file is a file called the, the MPT file, the global MPT file, and it's a way of sharing objects between Microsoft Project Pro programs. So the global file stores all of the macros in it. So if I put a macro inside the global file, it will make that macro available to any project that I open on my desktop. If I put it only in this project, then the macro is only available to this project file when I open it. So in general, you want to put them in your global file because you want to share them for all of your projects and you want those macros to be available for everything that you do. Down here at the bottom, it has row references and column references, and it's set to relative and absolute. A relative reference just means that it's going to reference wherever you've, whatever cell you've clicked in with your, with your mouse pointer. So if I was to click, let me cancel this. If I put my mouse here, and then I go to record a macro, the relative reference is when it, when it runs, it's going to run it here. But if I was to run the macro when I click down here, then it would start here. Now, if I use absolute reference, then it's always going to run the macro at row 6. And for column references, it's always going to run the macro on task name. If I put relative, then it's going to run it based off of whatever column I'm in. Um, so just understand those different behaviors. Generally, you want to use relative for rows and, and absolute for columns. Uh, the column names are generally very specific versus you generally move up and down in your project plan and look at different rows. So let's talk about some examples of macros. Uh, an example of a macro might be formatting text. So for instance, I'm getting a little bit older now and I can't quite see as well as I used to and I have to wear some reading glasses um, and I don't always bring them to work with me. So I might find that I have to format text on files when I open it. So I could create a macro to go ahead and change the font across the board for all of my uh, tasks in my project. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll go to Macros, and I'll click on Record Macro, and I'm going to call this Big Text. Oh, I got a space in there. So I got my Big Text macro, and it's recording right now. So I'm going to select all tasks. I can click this little selector box here, and it selects all. And then I'm going to click on the task menu. And then I'm going to go up here to the font. I'm going to change the font to 16. That makes it really big. Um, and again, I'm going to, and then I'm going to double click on these columns and make them widen up so that I can see everything. 
And now I have much bigger font that's much easier for me to read. And now I have to remember to go back to the view menu and stop recording my macro. And if I click on view macros, it'll show me a list of all the macros that I have. I've already created three, the boss report, change text, finance export. But here's the new one. I just created big text. And I can run that here, and I can do different things with it. I'm not actually going to run it. I'm going to actually change my text back because it won't do anything until I change the text. So I put the text back on 10 point, and I'm just going to click over here, and now I'm going to run my macro. So we'll go back to view macros, and we'll select it, and we'll click run, and there. Now I've got a macro that automatically makes all the text in my project plan bigger. And if I put that in my global MPT file, I now have that available to me for any project plan that I open, regardless of where it comes from, as long as I open it on my desktop. And so for me, that's kind of a useful little macro to have, just because I find it harder and harder to read things as I'm getting older and older. Uh, you could do similar things. You could have it highlight the specific row you're on. You could have it change the font of the specific row you're on. You can italicize or bold things that you're on. Uh, for instance, if you wanted to have a macro that went through and, and highlighted and bolded and changed the font to red for a specific task, that would be a really great macro. And, and that saves you from having to do that steps. Now, if you only do it once in the schedule, it's probably not worth the effort to build a macro. But if what you do is you go, if you have a 2,000 line schedule and you want to go through and highlight 100 of those lines, um, then you would probably want to use it. Then you could build a macro where you click on this line and, and run the macro. And click on this line and run the macro and it would highlight them. Um, how about let me try building an example of that. So we're going to go up here and we're going to record a macro. And we're going to call this one highlight text. We'll click OK. And I'm going to click on meeting six. And I want to turn it into highlight, and I want to change the font to red, and I want to bold it, and I want to italicize it. And then I want to go back over here to view and macros, and I'm going to stop recording. So now I've got a macro that does that. So now I can click on this one, and I can hit view macros, and I can run highlight text. And what did it do? Well, it went back up here to this row, and it set that and it highlighted it. And the reason it did that was because I didn't have the relative referencing on. So it, it moved up back up to row 5 instead of staying on row 11 where I had selected. So that's where that relative referencing comes in play. What are some other examples of macros that you might build? You might use macros to change your views around. For instance, um, when you come in here to the Gantt chart, you might want to turn off the timeline and you might want to pop this up like this so you can see the task form and maybe you want to do that every time you get open up a project file and you have a bunch of settings that you like to set and so you just create a macro to set all those settings up every time you open a project file uh, and to put things back the way I had them when I started clear all of these formats no color change all the text back to 10 and I got to change this font to automatic. <clears throat> and now my project plan is all the way back to start. Other examples, you might have to import data or you might have to export data. So you might create macros to do those activities because you're doing them repeatedly over and over and over. And, and it's the same set of steps each time and you want to, to automate that. So I kind of already showed you where the, the, the macro group is. It's up here on the view menu. Um, I don't personally like that it's on the view menu because I find that hard to find. So what I like to do is create my own ribbon. So you can go up here and you can choose customize ribbon and then that's going to show you this, this project options. And then you can go over here and you can create new tab and you can rename that and call it macros. And then it's got a new group, and I'm going to rename that as macros. Oops. I'm not the best typist, especially when there's people watching me. It gets worse when there's actually live people in the room, like when I'm in a meeting and I'm trying to type in front of people. It's, it's amazing to me how that just affects your ability to type. And I'm going to go here, and there's a drop-down up here that shows you popular commands. And then you can also see commands not on the ribbon, all commands, macros, and uh, if you click macros, it actually shows you the macros that we've already created, uh, but I'm actually looking for the macro command. So I'm going to choose all commands, 
and I'm going to scroll down and find M for macros. And I'm going to add macros, and I'm going to add macro security. And I'm not going to do that, change my mind, because it's actually already here. So at this point, I'm going to click OK. And now you can see I have a macros toolbar on my ribbon, and it has that macros group here. And so now when I come into my project plan and I open it, I'm going to have this toolbar, and it's always going to be there no matter what project plan I open, and I'll be able to quickly find my macros. Um, I might want to add some macros up here on my toolbar so that I can quickly get at them and run them. So I can go back up here and click Customize Ribbon, and I can expand out my toolbar. And this is where I would click Macros, and it would show me the list. And let's say I want to run the big text macro. So I'm going to add that here. I'm going to click OK. Oops, I did not add it where I wanted it to. Let me move that around. So now I have a button that I can click. It says big text. And of course, the downside of having that is I don't have a button that creates small text. So having created a big text macro, I might want to create a small text macro to put things back, or maybe a reversion macro, or whatever you want to call it. So just kind of think of those kinds of things. If you go and do a bunch of stuff, what, how, do you gonna, how are you going to set the file back to scratch? Are you just going to close the file and not save it, or what, what activities are you going to do? Um, so I can go back up here and customize the ribbon again. I can once again I can click macros and uh, I have my boss report macro. So I'm going to add the boss report. Oh, I need to call a select a group. I'm going to add it there. And let me move that guy back up. So now I have my macros here where I can record and view, and I have two buttons I can pick. Um, so I'm going to run the boss report, and it's going to go do a bunch of stuff, and it's going to automatically. Uh, set up the, the, the printing for a report so that I can then print it off my printer without having to format it. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, what did he do? How did he do all that? Um, so if you want to find out what a, a particular macro does, you can hit View Macros, and you can select that, and you can hit Edit, and it'll open it up, and it'll show you the code. Um, and it might not mean anything to you, but you can kind of get a sense. This is Show Outline Tasks. This does something with the time scale. Then it's got file page setup, it's turning the legend off, and then it's doing file print. Um, so it's somewhat in English, so if you read it, you can kind of figure out what it's doing. And you can always search these uh, commands out on, on online and get a, read through the reference files from Microsoft if you really need to get a sense for what that, 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 that particular piece of VBA code is doing. So now I've got to set everything all back. I'm going to change my font back down to 10. Um, so I'm going to go create a new boss report because this is something I had to do uh, one of my first jobs in a PMO. I was an analyst and I worked for a project management office in an insurance company. And I, I worked for the VP and she was a new VP and she was running a, a program to convert all of their IT systems over from a disparate set of systems that have been kind of homegrown into a, a, a large vendor provided package and um, it was originally scoped as about a 60 million dollar program but it ultimately ran into about 250 million dollars and anyway the first job was to print out reports on all of the projects we had some 25 projects with 25 project managers and and, and would collate all those collate all the data from all those projects, I would print out reports, and I would take them into the VP's office and put them in her inbox every Friday around 4 o'clock so that she could take that stuff home and read it over the weekend. And um, being the kind of guy that I am, my boss, Tim Runty, he always says, well, if I give Bob like an hour of free time, he'll go figure out a way to make everything really fast and automated. Because um, if I have to repeat steps over and over and over again, I'll find a way to make it so I can just click a button and have it done. Um, so let's go create a boss report that I might have to give my boss every week. So I've got a Gantt chart here. Um, got some tasks in it. I don't particularly want those to be 16 point font. I'm going to change those down to 10. Um, so we're going to go up to Macros, and I'm going to go to Record Macro. And I'm going to call this 
boss report to, because I already have one, so I have to call this one too. Uh, let me put in a comment. This is the weekly report. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to format the Gantt chart. So I'm going to go up and click on time scale. And I'm going to change months to years. So I'm going to change months down here to quarters. And I click OK. That makes it really tight. Really, and then I'm going to go and click on bar styles, and I am going to change the task color to red. And we got a lot of milestones there, so I'm going to do the same thing on bar styles. I'm going to click on milestones. I'm going to change the color on the milestones to red. And that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Change that to red, click OK, and it still didn't work. Well, I'm not going to investigate why it didn't work right this minute. Um, so I've got these bar styles changed to red. Let's go ahead and change the time scale back so we can actually see those. Change that to weeks. Change that to months. Now it's a much smaller time scale. So you can actually see it. Uh, so, so your boss likes things red. Uh, like me, your boss can't read so well. So we're going to go in here and change the font across the board to 16. Now you notice how I clicked on this little selector box and that selects all the data. And then I change the font to 16. And again, you want to make sure all the data is visible so you can double click on these columns. And then maybe we'll move this over like that. And then, I don't know about you, but all of these resource names, those are kind of hard to read, so I'm going to remove those. Uh, let's go back into bar styles. We're going to click on text, and we're going to remove the resource names. And click OK, and the resource names are gone. So now this is a little clearer and easier to read. And then I'm going to go up and click File and click Print. Oh, I don't like this guy down here. I'm going to click on Page Setup and go to Legend, and I'm going to turn off the Legend. And here I am. I'm going to click Print. It's off to the printer. And then I'm going to go back to Macros and I'm going to stop recording. And so now if we look at View Macros, we have a Boss 2 report. And I'm going to cancel here. I'm going to actually go and add that up to my ribbon. So I'll go to Customize Ribbon and I'll select Macros from the drop down. And there's my list. I'm going to go over here to the right side of the screen and expand out my macros ribbon. I'm going to select and move my boss report 2 over. And since I have boss report 2, I'm not going to be running boss report 1 anymore. So I'm going to click the remove button and take that one off of my ribbon. So I click OK, and here I am. I have macros, I have big text, and I have boss report 2. So a week goes by, and it's time for me to create the report again. Uh, let's go set this back to zero. Change that to 10. Go back to bar styles. We'll put the resources back. I'm going to leave the color alone. So I go, a week has gone by. It's time for me to run the boss report again. I hit boss report, and there it goes. It's formatted my Gantt chart. It's opened up the print screen. I still have to click the print button myself, unfortunately. Um, if you know a little bit with VB coding, you can get in there and actually force it to do that as well. Uh, that, that does take some programmer experience and knowledge. Uh, but at this point, you didn't have to spend all that time manipulating the Gantt chart and the time trays and changing the colors and, and setting up the font sizes. And, and you, you can now just click print. I'm not going to print again. So that's kind of a, an example of a report that I've done several times in my career. Um, I find often in PMOs and project management offices that there's a lot of reporting that gets done for senior executives. Um, and 
they all have their own formats. Each each executive has a different format that they want, and it's it's a difficult conversation to get them all to centralize on one format. And it's almost easier to have a an analyst or a project manager or a project coordinator who gets together and and formats the report and puts it out for them. And you could build a macro that would automatically PDF that, and you could even have it automatically send email. Uh, there's a lot of things you could do with macros. Uh, let's see, what's another example of a macro that we could do? We could do a finance data export. So I, uh, on that same program, I worked a lot with a group in finance whose job was to forecast cash flow. And so they really wanted to understand what the labor hours were in our project schedules. And so we had 25 projects, all being managed by 25 different project managers. And if you go into the resource usage page, you can see over here that there's hours by time phase. And you can adjust the time phases to any scale that you want. I'm just going to leave it alone. Right now it's months and weeks. But you can, we could put it in days if we wanted to. And then we could see hours by day. Um, and then you can also right click here on the, I don't know what it's called, it's the details section. And it gives you a set of columns that you can put inside of it, actual work, cumulative work, over allocation, cost. I like to look at cost because I put cost on my resources. I can now see what's my daily cost for my resources. Um, and so I had a, a, a job where I worked with finance and, and what we would do every week is we would, we didn't actually have costs in our project schedules, we just have hours. And finance had all the uh, rates for all the resources. So we would bring in resource information to all of our project managers and then we would take and export these hours by day and, and send them out in a large file over to finance and then they would run a, a cost forecasting model off of the project plans so that they could estimate what their cash flow needs were over the next coming months. So you might need to do something similar to that in your own career, your own job. Uh, so here's a really simple example of that. Uh, first I'm going to reformat that down to a little bit smaller text. Um, so here we've got a series of, of project information. If I uh, select the column at the top and right click, I can then see the menu and I'm going to insert a column and I'm going to insert cost. And so I can see that I have a cost here for each one of my meetings and that cost is driven off of the resources on my resource sheet. Each one of my resources has a rate and when I apply that resource to the work, the, and the hours of work that's on here, it, it generates a cost. We can insert the work column as well. So we can see the total number of hours by resources. Um, so each resource times its work times its rate equals this, this cost. Uh, I'm going to hide the work column. I'm even going to hide the cost column. So uh, a, a report that you might have to do on a weekly or monthly basis would be to export cost data and send it off to finance. So if you find yourself having to do that repeatedly for 25 projects, you find a way to automate that relatively quickly. Um, so I'm going to go up and create a macro to do that. So I'm going to go to macros, and I'm going to hit record macro, and I'm going to create a finance export. So I'm recording now. I'm going to do save as. And I'm going to choose computer, and I'm going to put it in my webinars folder so I know where to find it. And it has a save as type, and here's the key. I'm going to change the type from project. I'm going to change that over to Excel workbook. And now when I click save, it's going to bring up a export data wizard that helps me figure out how to export data to Excel. And I'm going to click next. And it gives me two choices here. It gives me the Project Excel template or the selected data. Now, the Project Excel template is really big. It exports a whole bunch of data out of Microsoft Project into a bunch of uh, sheets into Excel. Um, it's great if you want to get huge amounts of data out of Project into Excel to do create reports and graphs or just to pass off data to other people without using Microsoft Project. Um, it's not so great if you're trying to create a really tight and focused export. So we're going to choose selected data because we just want to export a few fields. Um, it's going to ask me if I want to create a new map, and I'm going to say yes. And then I have to pick here which kind of a map I want to create. So do I want to map off a of task, resources, or assignments? So Microsoft Project keeps data in three different um, tables, if you will. Uh, it keeps task data, which is 
task name, start and finish dates, work on the task, baseline information about the task. It keeps data in the resource call tables. And resources is resource name, initials, rates for those resources. Uh, there's text fields, there's number fields, there's things for the resources. And then there's assignment data, and so assignment is the marriage between those two. That's where the you figure out what resources on which task. And so assignment also has a set of data with it. Um, and so depending on what you want to export, you have to figure out which of these tables to pick. Um, so for this, I'm just going to keep it really simple and export task data. And I'm going to also use headers so that when I open my Excel file, I know what column is which. I'm going to click Next. And it's going to ask me to give a name for the worksheet in Excel, and then I have to map the fields. Uh, so the, the task name field is just called name and project. Uh, I want the start date, so I'm going to type ST and get start. I want the finish date. If I type FI, it'll give me finish. And then I also want to get cost, so I can type cost. And then let's also get work, so I can type work. And there it's going to, uh, this is my export. This is how my tasks are going to map. So it's going to take name, start, finish, cost, and work, and it's going to export those all into Excel into these fields called name, start date, finish date, cost, and schedule work. And it gives you this little teeny tiny view of what the day is going to look like. It's going to have meeting one, 821, $15,000, and 80 hours. And I'm going to click next. It's going to ask me if I want to save this map. So if I was going to do this repeatedly over and over and over, I would save the map. And I might call it something like finance export and click save uh, because I already had one. It's going to ask me if I really want to overwrite it. And I'm going to say yes. Um, and then I'm going to click finish. And it did my export. Where did it go? Um, so we're going to open up Excel. And here it is. And so I got an export. And I got the name of the meeting or the task, I got the start date, I got the finish date, I got cost information, I got scheduled work. Now I can bundle that file up and send it off to finance and they can do whatever they want with it. They can apply rates to ours and figure out if my cost matches their cost. Um, they can look at start dates and finish dates and do some cash flow projecting. Uh, there's different things that they can do with that. Um, but the idea here being that you got to send them this file every week and you don't want to have to go through the process of figuring out that, that mapping. You can just do it once and then automate it. And we're going to jump back into project. So I've still got the macro running. I need to remember to go back here and hit stop recording. And I'm going to pop back over out here and I'm going to delete this file. And then I'm going to run the macro. So I'm going to go into macros and hit view macros. Which one is it? Interesting. I got two of them. Why did I get two? Let's take a look at them. So you can always edit them and look at the VBA and see what it does. So this was recorded today by me. And it does a finance export into a file called finance data. And it exports start, finish, cost, and scheduled work. OK. So that looks good. I'm going to run that. And so it ran. And again, you say, where's the file? Well, there it is. Same file as it was before. Um, what if I run the file and I've already got something there? Um, so let's go back up in here and customize our ribbon, because I'm going to be running this every week now. So I'm going to go up and choose macros from the command drop down. I don't really like the name on this. I would rename it something, but I'll do that later. And I'll go into here, and I will add it. And I'm going to rename it Finance Export. And click OK. And click OK. So now I have a Finance Export button. And I'll click the button, and it gives me an exception. Why did it do that? I don't know. Is that because the file's in the way? Delete. No, oh, it didn't like my renaming it. View macros, run. 
something about the way I copied that into the custom ribbon isn't right. So I'd have to go look at that and make it work. But the macro still works. And there's the data file once again. Going back over to Project Pro. So that's the idea. Um, I've got to export this data. And the nice thing about that is I don't actually have to reformat my Gantt chart. I don't have any cost here. I don't have work showing. Um, if, I don't, if I'm not interested in that data, I don't have to have it on the screen in order to cut and paste it and then put it in Excel and then send it off to finance. I can just map that export, click, click my macro and have it run, and then grab the file and send it off. Let's see, what are some other examples of macros that we might use? I'm going to switch over and just talk about examples that I've done in the past, and then we'll take some questions and answers. So other things I've done in the past is uh, for that same program, we had to baseline all of the projects so that we could understand uh, what changes project managers were making to their projects. So we have 25 projects with 25 independent project managers all going in and managing and changing their schedules on a weekly by weekly basis. Um, project managers might go in and change their baseline. So what we created for that particular instance is we decided as a PMO that baseline 5 would be the baseline that the PMO kept. And every week I would get a series of project files and have to open them all and set the baseline. So you could get that I quickly figured out a way to automate that, record the steps, and then um, instead of setting it up as I have to open each project myself and hit a button, I actually went into VBA and I, and I actually um, created a, a, a program that would open a folder and take any project that was in that folder and set baseline 5 on it and then and save the file and, and move on. And, and so at that point what I got was a, a button that I would click and it would run across every project that was in a folder and set the baselines. Um, so I took what as a manual task might take a project coordinator an hour or two hours and it turned it into a, a five minute button task. Uh, another example that you might have to do is, um, let's jump back over here to project. I was showing this to this before. I think I already talked about it a little bit, but exporting all this time phase data. Um, so for the same program, we used, we actually took Microsoft Access and we connected it to Microsoft Project, and you can pull the data from these tables uh, by resource, by task, and by work for that, that assignment period. And so we would pull the data. You can pull it by any period you want. We would pull it by, by day. And then we would marry that up with this particular place that I was working. I had two project management systems. So we had Microsoft Project for the project managers to manage their tasks. And then we had uh, another product called Clarity where IT would actually do its time tracking and do its task management. And so we'd, we'd spend a lot of time figuring out how to marry the two of those and and then we use Microsoft Access to actually connect to the back end and Clarity and pull project management data. And then we would connect to all the Microsoft project plans that the project managers were using and we'd marry all that data together into a, um, a Microsoft Access database and we would do all that through VBA. Um, and then that way you have this nice, concise reporting solution for all your project management information. Now that's a fairly complicated macro. Uh, maybe it's 2,000 lines of code. Um, you'd probably need a developer to go develop it, but it's totally something that's possible, and it's, it's not something that's particularly difficult to do. Um, it just requires somebody who's got VBA experience. Okay, so I am ready to take questions and answers. Perfect. Okay, let's get started. We have several. First up is, is it easier to build a macro versus doing complex calculations in a formula? Yeah, so uh, I don't know that there's a yes or no answer to that. I think it depends on what you're doing. So for me, if you're just trying to do some work on one one row or one column, and maybe you just want to build a complicated formula, or maybe if you're just trying to figure out what you're doing, you might you might want to use the formulas because in some ways the formulas are easier to understand, um, and you can kind of visually see them, and, and you can work through them if you, if you're used to doing things in Excel. You can put a formula in one column, and then you can have the next column look at that formula, and then you have the next column so you can break the formulas out into steps. Um, if you're doing something really complex, it's going to process across a thousand rows, then you're probably going to want to move into VBA and figure out how to do it there. 
Okay, great. Uh, next up is how do you organize your macro code? Do you use group type or some other way? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Uh, let's go look at that. So over here in Project Pro, when we click on Visual Basic, we see a whole series of modules here. So every time I create a macro, Project goes out and creates these modules and you can organize them. So here in module one, I've actually already organized three that I created before, um, but each of the other modules also has a macro in it. So it might be useful for you to say, well, you know, I, I want to have a module and I want to name it macros and I want to put all of my macros in that one module. So you could rename it macros and then you could copy the macros out of here like this and you can put them into here like this. And now you've got it all, you get all of your macros into one module. And the benefit of that is there's just one place to look and see them all instead of having to tab through each one like this. Um, if you've got a whole bunch of macros, say you've got 50 different macros, you might want to uh, organize the modules around types or what do they do. So maybe this is export macros and maybe this is report formatting macros. Um, there's no real right answer. You just got to organize in a way that's logical so that you can understand what's there and find things quickly. Next question. How can you comment on your macros? Oh, so comments. So here's an example of comments up here. And these are comments that's automatically put into the tool by Microsoft Project. Um, so it's got a apostrophe here and then it says macro boss report, macro recorded by Robert Bondarek on 729. Um, so maybe I want to add in some more comments about what is this. So this is the boss report. run this report every Friday at noon and give to VP, right? So now I've got some comment in there that gives a little bit more context around what is it that, what happens with this, this macro. And so, and you can go and put comments anywhere. You can put a comment over here. This is a comment. You can insert a comment here. More comments. You just need to put that apostrophe there. And then, of course, the other place you can put comments is when you go into View Macros and you click on, is it, it's not Edit, it's Options. Options will bring up this description. And it says Macro, big text, macro recorded here. So I could go in here and I could go to the end and I could type, this macro makes all the text in the Gantt chart font size 16. So now when I look at it, I can see what it does. So those are kind of the two ways to comment your macros. Does that answer the question? Yeah, that's great. And it looks like we're uh, coming to the end of our questions with this last one. How can I set up a hotkey for my macro? Oh, yeah. So hotkeys. So when you go back into macros, and we do record, it has this shortcut key here and it asks you, oh, what key do you want to put to it? And your only option is control plus a key. So you can pick any key on your keyboard, but it's always going to be control plus. And uh, that sets up the hot key and whenever you push that, it's going to run your macro. And the only thing to remember with that is um, it does override the out of the box system macro. So, so across the board, control C and control V are cut and paste in Microsoft applications. So if I put a V here, I've just disabled pasting in, in Project Pro and I've now turned it into this macro. And I might not want to do that if I'm the kind of person that uses Control V all the time to paste. Now if you don't ever use shortcut keys and you know you're kind of free to do what you want. Does that answer the question? That's great. I think so. And with that, Bob, I'd like to thank you for your time uh, during this session and for the preparation and uh, shared expertise that you're giving us all about macros. And also, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. Um, I know you have a lot going on, so hopefully this session, uh, you can walk away with at least one new idea or um, functionality that you weren't using before. Uh, we'd love to continue the conversation. We've identified a quick uh, 
on a list of ideas that we've come up with that might be helpful for you. If you're interested in a demo or a setting up a free trial so you and your team can actually get uh, familiar with uh, any of the Microsoft uh, Office products or SharePoint or project, we'd love to talk with you and make that happen. Sometimes, too, we understand that just getting a second set of eyes on your processes can be beneficial. So feel free to reach out. We have consultants that would love to hop on the phone with you and uh, try and do some troubleshooting free of charge. Also, uh, we have several uh, public classes on our training calendar that can be viewed on our website. Uh, feel free to take a look and hopefully there's a topic there that meets your needs. If not, feel free to reach out and let us know. We uh, put together custom training all the time and we'd love to make sure uh, we could do that for you as well. Okay. Closing comments. So as you may know, uh, this live session qualifies for a free PDU. In order to uh, receive that PDU, as soon as the browser closes, you're going to be having another one pop up that has five short survey questions that we'd love to have you uh, fill out and complete. Upon completion of uh, your survey, you will be getting an email directly from me in about 48 hours with the PDU information for this course. As always, just as a reminder, these sessions are uh, created with you in mind. If we're hitting the mark, missing the mark, or you have an idea that uh, we haven't yet covered, we'd love to hear from you. So feel free to make a note on your survey or send us an email or give us a call. Uh, anything we can do to make this time more effective uh, for you is something that we're definitely open to entertaining. So thank you again for your time, and we hope you have a great rest of the day.